In 1609, mighty mariner Henry Hudson set sail from Amsterdam aboard the good ship Half Moon, becoming the first European to chart the waters of New York. 400 years later, we're aboard the replica ship to find out what life is like on board. With me is Chip Reynolds. Chip, what made the original voyage so important in a historical context? Well, this voyage of Henry Hudson from 1609 led immediately to the founding of the colony of New Netherland. What made this colony so unique is that amongst all the American colonies of the time, it is the only one that had a range of ethnicities and racial backgrounds. It was the only one where you had a range of different religious views and different schools of thought. And it was the place where we find the origins of much of what we find in our modern day constitution. We're currently in the galley and in front of me is, I have to say, it doesn't really look that appetizing. <laughs> what is this? This is called hardtack. They would cook uh, on board the ship uh, something that would be similar to a stew. And this could either have uh, beef or salt cod that would be cooked up in there. And then the hardtack would be dipped into this until it could soften to the point where they could actually consume it. So now we know what they ate, let's go below deck to see where they slept. We're now in the sleeping quarters, which are a little bit cramped. How many people were in here on the first voyage? On the original voyage, there would have been something like 16 or 18 crew. This thing here is called the capstan. Correct. What does it do? You put the capstan bar in place, and then the crew will get on and turn around and around like so. And as you haul on the rope this way, you can pull it in and gain mechanical advantage so that you can lift loads like the anchor, for example, which might have several thousand pounds of loading on it. We are on to the weapons part of the tour. Chip, who were the enemies that Henry Hudson and his, his crew would have had to deal with? When they were sailing into unknown areas like this, they didn't know whether the people that they would meet there were going to be friendly or warlike. And so they had to be prepared for this. Thus they had the falconets, which is that muzzle-loading cannon there, the uh, swivel gun or murderer, which is the breech loader here, as well as the musket and the bandolier. Even in this log, it records Hudson's voyage, you can see one day they're in open war and conflict with the Indians in the area and then days later they're talking about the loving people and it just gives you some sense of the range of human experience that can exist within one small group of people. Now we come to the most important aspect of life on board, navigation. How do they get their way around? Every 30 minutes aboard the ship, they're taking measurements about everything that's going around them and documenting all of this. And thus we have this traverse board. And if at the start of the watch, they were sailing north on their compass, you'd put a peg in north. And if the speed was, say, three knots, you'd put a peg in the three. Now let's say the wind changed, and at the second half hour increment, now they're going to the northeast. The peg would go into that particular slot uh, the method of doing this is called dead reckoning, which is simply plotting vector lines as they go along in their sailing. We've been sailing for the last 20 years as a public education platform. Our principal program today is sailing in what we call the Voyage of Discovery, in which we have a crew that's comprised of 12 and 13 year old students. It's an extraordinarily powerful thing to see these seventh graders board the ship as little children and then walk away with a real strut in their gait as they have taken on these adult responsibilities. So now you know the story behind the Hudson River. I'm Ella Morton and you've been watching Rocket Boom. <laughs>